Hello there. This is the new Mazda CX-60 and the key to this particular model can be found under the bonnet. Uh, that is a brand new 3.3 litre diesel engine with the cylinders mounted in a very traditional inline format. The drive is sent to all the wheels and the gearbox is an 8 speed with twin wet clutches instead of perhaps the normal torque converter variety. Stop, stop, stop. Look, this isn't a car review from 40 years ago. But it's 2023. That's right, just as everybody else is abandoning the internal combustion engine and instead focusing on pure electrics, Mazda has decided to develop a brand new diesel engine. To find out whether Mazda has completely lost the plot and whether this CX-60 diesel is actually worth recommending, stay tuned. In the meantime, please do consider subscribing to the channel and if you've got any questions about CX-60 diesel, drop them in the comments box below. The CX-60 arrived in the UK last year as Mazda's take on the premium mid-sized SUV. It launched with a very on-trend plug-in hybrid, Mazda's first PHEV in fact, and it mostly impressed. For 2023, Mazda has dropped in a brand new 3.3 litre straight six diesel engine in two power outputs, 197 brake horsepower that's solely available with rear wheel drive and 250 brake horsepower with all wheel drive. And that's the car that we've got here. If you think that's crazy in this world of downsized petrol engines and pure electric powertrains, then Mazda is going to introduce another derivative of the CX-60 later this year. And do you want to guess what that's going to be powered by? Mm, no, it's going to be, wait for it, a three litre straight six petrol. <laughs> Mazda's not getting this, is it? I mean, that's crazy. Mazda is not reading the room right now, is it? But I love it. So, has Mazda completely lost the plot and should we dismiss this CX-60, lovely as it may seem, as a dinosaur and move on to something more relevant in 2023? Mm, no. You see, Mazda thinks this car with this engine is very relevant in 2023. They say that in this race to electric power, plenty of people who need a diesel and who want a diesel, perhaps they need to tow, for example, are being left behind. They're being forgotten about by the other car makers. It's all very well launching cars with pure electric powertrains right now, but the ban on pure petrols and diesels doesn't take effect for another seven years. Now, Mazda thinks it can peddle quite a nice line in producing cars with traditional engines for people who need traditional engines. Don't go thinking this is just an archaic diesel that's been shoved under that very long bonnet. This is Mazda, after all, the masters of engineering. So it's a mild hybrid, but more importantly, there's a clever new piston design and a new fuel injection technology called, here goes, distribution controlled, partially pre-mixed compression ignition. To put it simply, the engine can operate in a more closely controlled, lean burn state of operation for longer than perhaps a four cylinder diesel. What all of this means is that this rather large car with a honking great big diesel engine under the bonnet coughs out less CO2 and delivers better fuel economy than a four cylinder BMW X3 2 litre diesel. As a side note, in my two weeks of driving this car, I've been averaging 50 mpg, and I haven't even been driving this car all that carefully. So, just as everybody else is abandoning diesel power, Mazda comes along and develops an engine that has all the smoothness and oral delight that six cylinders can deliver, and yet has the efficiency of a four pot. It's mad. Clever it may be, but it's not completely plain sailing. 
It would seem as though Mazda has spent most of its time on making sure that this diesel engine has the most impressive eco credentials. It just would have been nice if Mazda had spent just a little bit more time fine tuning things a little bit. Because on startup, that engine is a bit of a throwback to a 1980s Peugeot diesel. It's very coarse and very loud. Happily, when it's all warmed up and you're driving, it does settle down. But I do think a BMW straight six diesel is a bit smoother. In fact, I think the three litre straight six diesel Jaguar now puts in the F-Pace is smoother than this engine. It's not too bad, don't misunderstand me. It's just that others do it slightly better. It does make a good noise though, although I'm not sure if it's artificially enhanced. There's good mid-range punch and the engine feels more powerful than the 250 brake horsepower Mazda claims. The gearbox is a surprise too. Instead of fitting a torque converter like you'd expect Mazda to, it actually features two wet clutches which means the gear changes are silky smooth. The best bit though is the handling. Now if you're used to a Mazda CX-30 or a CX-5, you'll probably hop into this and think, but it's all a little bit wallowy. It's not that agile. But for a car of this size, the CX-60, I think, is best in class. The steering, for example, has got a lovely accuracy to it. There's a lovely weight to it as well. It just means that you can really grab this CX-60 by the scruff of its neck down a country road and just have a lot of fun with it. The chassis has a beautiful balance to it as well. And the brakes, well, they've got a really solid feel to them. It's only the ride that's a black mark on the CX-60's otherwise exemplary handling score sheet. It doesn't feature air suspension or adaptive dampers, just springs and passive dampers, and the car struggles to shrug off potholes. It feels just a little too coarse for too much of the time. It's the same story inside. Just a few plastics, such as the gear lever, spoil what is a very well-designed and well-made interior. Takumi models like this car improve things further with their white Nappa leather seats, maple wood inlays and chrome details, and the rather unusual Japanese textiles that cover the dash that also feature Kakanui stitching, a special kind of hanging stitching. It's a lovely place to be. Space in the back is just average though, and you can say the same about the boot. So, is this Mazda CX-60 diesel hopelessly archaic and not recommendable? Well, no, actually. If you're the type of person who needs a diesel, perhaps you tow lots or you do lots of motorway miles, or perhaps you're just not ready to go all in with electric, the CX-60 is a great option. It's cheaper than the competition, it's a bit different, it's rewarding to drive, and that clever engine means it'll probably be cheap on your wallet.